Hi everyone, press the like button if you enjoyed yesterday's Champions League action and write in the comments down below which clubs will make it to the semi-finals in your opinion. And while you're typing, we are about to begin. Let's get the show on the pitch. The second leg against Barca will be a final for us. I'm confident in my team. Luis Enrique claimed. Rafinha is exciting. He is really fantastic. If you see how he's pressing, always trying the best. I love his personality and he gives us a lot. His attitude is perfect. The way he presses, Xavi said. Antoine Griezmann has been named man of the match for his display in the Atletico Madrid vs Borussia Dortmund clash. The Frenchman provided an assist to Lino. There have been 18 goals across the first legs of the four quarterfinals. This figure has only been surpassed once before in this competition, back in 1956-57 for the European Champions Club's Cup. In the second leg, we have to stay focused, especially in the first minutes of both halves. Today we lost focus for 5-10 minutes and it cost us a lot. Jules Koundé stated after the game. Here's how Luis Enrique welcomed Xavi with a warm hug before the match. A very heartwarming moment indeed. Rafinha is the first Barcelona player after Messi to score a brace in a knockout match in the Champions League. Have a look at Mbappe's shocking stats from his match against Barcelona. 13 times possession lost, 2 out of 10 duels won, 1 out of 4 dribbles completed, 0 out of 3 shots in target, 0 assists, and 0 goals. Barcelona have conceded 2 goals in the first 5 minutes of the second half for the first time in the history of the Champions League. The Catalans went into the second half with a 1-0 lead but conceded in the 48th and 50th minutes. Pedri returns from injury after 38 days and delivers a magic assist after just one minute. Pep Guardiola was wearing a Richard Mill watch at the Santiago Bernabeu in the Champions League. It is worth 1.1 million pounds. It is so rare that there are only 50 versions in the world, with Guardiola and Nadal two of the lucky recipients. Marquinhos is now PSG's all-time highest appearance holder with 436 games for the club, top achievement for the defender. What I would say about Phil Foden's 23-24 season is that when Erling Haaland is not there or when Kevin De Bruyne is injured, now he puts Manchester City on his shoulders. Foden is now a world-class footballer, Thierry Henry thinks. Our Temdafbik has been voted Girona's player of the month for the fourth time according to the results of the month. Bayern confirmed that Serge Gnabry has sustained a hamstring strain against Arsenal. The German winger will be sidelined for the time being. Barcelona and PSG legend Ronaldinho was the guest of honor at the match. Nice to see you, Ronnie. Ivan Toni's current price tag is roughly 30 to 40 million pounds. Several Premier League clubs, including Chelsea and Arsenal, are closely monitoring him for a potential summer transfer. Playing here is very difficult. They were very fast in attack, but we did well," Christensen said. Pau Cobarsi is the youngest ever defender, 17 years and 79 days old, to win a Champions League quarterfinal tie. FC Bayern are keen on signing Italian talented midfielder Guido della Rovere for the academy. Cremonense's midfielder is considered a huge talent and he is already on the short list of several clubs, including Ajax and Juventus. AS Roma changed with the arrival of De Rossi. They produce excellent football, but we came to this challenge well and will put our qualities on the pitch," Stefano Pioli assured. Luis Enrique has faced Barcelona three times as a coach and lost all three of those matches. Xabi Alonso on working in the Premier League in the future. You never know. At the moment, I have enough on my plate to think about. But I'm still young as a coach and for sure it's a nice opportunity. Manchester United might qualify for the Champions League next season by coming sixth thanks to a UEFA rule change. If West Ham wins the Europa League and finishes fifth, Manchester United would qualify for the Champions League if they came sixth. Hardest opposition? Didier Drogba was one. He was really difficult to play, especially when you play at Stamford Bridge. Small type pitch. Everything is close to the box, Nemanja Vidic said. Rodrigo de Paul scored his debut Champions League goal against Borussia Dortmund. Our congratulations to the player. In the second leg, we will give everything we have. We are Paris Saint-Germain, do not forget that," Nuno Mendes claimed. 
Clubs who break the Premier League's financial rules can still expect to be given significant points deductions in the future, despite a proposal to replace points penalties with a fine. 32 years old Stuart Dallas has announced his retirement from football. A big injury in 2022 sadly cost the decision. His knee suffered irreplaceable damage despite best efforts with doctors, etc. Good luck on your next chapter, Dallas. It's a special night for me. I still have more years in my contract and I plan to fulfill them. I will do my best to stay here at Barca for many years," Rafinha promised. Great night in Paris, so proud of the game we've played today, but we need to repeat these 90 minutes next week again. Forza Barca, Ilka Gündoğan said. Barcelona are the first team to score three-plus goals against PSG in Paris in the Champions League since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United. Atletico Madrid's Samuel Lino has delivered three goals and three assists in the ongoing Champions League run, which is the best tally among defenders in the last six seasons. Aston Villa is on Dumfries. Inter has proposed 4 million euros per year, but if Inter get offered 30 million euros, they would consider a sale. The Dutchman's entourage has been contacted by Aston Villa, but Denzel does not consider Villa to be at Inter's level and would like a team that fights for the title and UCL. Barcelona forward Rafinha has been named the man of the match for his performance in the PSG vs Barcelona clash. He netted a brace there. Guys, it's time to subscribe to our channel. You're welcome! And now, let's have a look at the results of yesterday's UCL fixtures. Here's a quick recap of yesterday's dice. Atletico Madrid made a brilliant start to the battle against Borussia Dortmund. In the 32nd minute, Los Colchoneros led 2-0. Depaul and Lino were responsible for goals, though the visitors managed to get one back. It was Alir who gave Dortmund a pretty decent chance of reaching the semifinals. In the other match of the day, PSG and Barcelona offered some bright and entertaining football. Barca opened the scoring thanks to Donnarumma's blunder and Rafinha's accurate shot. The Catalans kicked off the second half rather poorly with Dembele and then Vitinha putting the Parisians ahead. By the way, Usman wildly celebrated his goal against his former team, certainly upsetting Barca fans. Nevertheless, at the end of the match, Xavi's side had more reasons for being optimistic. First, Rafinha equalized the matter after a magnificent assist from Pedri, then Christensen found the net with a header from a corner kick, thus snatching the victory for Blaugrana. I believe that PSG remained to be the favorites. We've just tightened the gap because defensively we've been solid. I'm very proud because it was a great victory against one of the best teams in the world. We are halfway there," Xavi noted after the match. However, Barcelona and PSG have boycotted their post-match interviews with Spanish Champions League TV rights holders after Mono Burgos told a racist joke about Lamine Mal on air as presenter Susana Gosh and Jorge Valdano left with him, informs El Confidencial. The 16-year-old Lamine Mal has witnessed a massive rise in his transfer value after consistently performing for Xavi's side in the current 2023-24 season. Only six months ago, the teenager was valued at just 11 million euros, but now his current market value stands at 134 million euros, according to a study published by CIES Football Observatory. Other than the Barcelona star, Chelsea's Cole Palmer and Manchester United's Kobe Mainu also saw a huge increase in their market values. Jurgen Klopp has made a shock admission about his future as he prepares to leave Liverpool at the end of the current season. In a stunning revelation back in January, Klopp announced that he would part ways with the Reds after nine years at the helm at the end of the current season. At the time of making the announcement, the German manager had revealed that he was running out of energy and did not want to do the same job again and again. Speaking to reporters, Klopp said, In this moment, I don't plan a further career as a manager. Maybe ask me in a year, but not in this moment. Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola poked fun at Florentino Perez and Real Madrid, criticizing the grass at the Santiago Bernabeu. In the build-up to Real and City's Champions League quarter-final first leg clash, it was announced the roof of the Bernabeu would be closed. In the aftermath of a stunning 3-3 draw, Guardiola told Perez that he should be more focused on improving the state of the pitch in a savage deck at the Real president. Speaking to the press after the game, Guardiola said, I like to see this guy, honestly, but it's true that it's impressive. Now they just have to take care of the grass. They just 
have to improve that. Florentino only has to worry about having a good pitch next, as Madrid had always had, like a carpet. Gold Portal has presented its ranking of the main contenders for the Ballon d'Or. The list is headlined by Real Madrid's Jude Bellingham. The stellar midfielder is followed by PSG's Kylian Mbappe. Manchester City winger Phil Foden surpassed his teammate Erling Haaland, who was placed fourth, and entered the top three of the list of candidates for the highest individual award. Another Manchester City representative, Rodri, is among the top five nominees for the most prestigious prize in the number one game. Folks, that's it for today. Check out the videos from our other projects.